So we're here today to talk about fundraising events on Mighty Cause. My name is Bethany. I'm the Community Engagement Director here at Mighty Cause, and we're also going to be joined by Bryce Melvin, the VP of Product and Operations. And he and I are both really excited to be here to talk to you about fundraising events. Uh, for those of you that haven't tried this strategy or have tried it or are thinking about trying it, every single nonprofit or school has the potential to host a fundraising event uh, without uh, all kinds of crazy effort. Uh, everyone can do it, and it's really a great opportunity to boost your uh, fundraising success in the year ahead. So we're really excited to be here to start talking about it with everyone today. So we'll start with uh, just some brief information in case anyone's new to Mighty Cause, not super familiar with the company. We've been around since 2006, really focusing on nonprofits. How can we make fundraising easier for our nonprofit and school partners? We are uh, employee owned and mission driven. Uh, many people that work for Mighty Cause have previously worked for nonprofits. Uh, so we understand the uh, struggles, challenges, and of course, all the exciting things that come in with working for a nonprofit. And that's really all uh, that goes into the, the products that we create for you, uh, the content and the strategy tips that we try to share uh, to help make fundraising easier more efficient, more powerful for your organization. So uh, really excited to talk to you all today about our team and event fundraising tools. Uh, but there's lots of fundraising tools available for nonprofits, including year-round solutions, donation page for your website, all kinds of other great things. So if you haven't checked them out, please feel free to do that. But today, we're here to talk about fundraising events. So before we get too far, I just wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about really why this is important. Why is this strategy something that you should really be considering if you haven't yet? Um, many nonprofits have, you know, year-end appeals, may have a campaign in the spring, you've got an annual giving campaign, you might have recurring giving campaigns, you've got lots of different things that you're doing all year round to raise funds for your organization. Why should you consider something else? Why do you need to add an event? Um, and really, there's lots of reasons, lots of things that uh, can add value for your organization. Uh, but the, the central thing that it really comes down to is that hosting an event, encouraging teams and individuals to fundraise on your behalf is one of the most direct ways that you can raise more money for your organization and acquire new donors. We always talk about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. We know there's value in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And hosting an event, something like a 5K or a walkathon, whatever it might be, that's a really easy entry point for an individual who's maybe never thought about fundraising. They don't do fundraising all the time like we do. They have maybe never thought about fundraising before. It might feel daunting but giving them a really easy entry point, like a race that they're gonna run and raise funds for your organization at the same time, is a great way to activate those people who might be great peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for you, but just need an easy way to get started. And of course, once they do, your organization is now getting access to their whole network of family, friends, coworkers, whatever it might be. Again, coming back to that, more dollars raised for your organization, but also more donors. And it's really fun. It can add fun into your fundraising strategy if you do it in the right way. Uh, lots of fundraising efforts that you'll do, especially things that we work with here at Mighty Cause are all uh, really focused on online and digital engagement. But lots of opportunities for event fundraising come with that in-person interaction with your supporters, which is such an important piece of the overall stewardship and relationship building process. So giving your supporters a chance to get out, be active, participate in something fun that you're doing makes fundraising feel easier for them to contribute to. And it'll also, again, just lead to that overall goal of raising more and having deeper relationships with your supporters. 
lots of other reasons, but those are just some of the key ones uh, to think about. And before you think that might be it's too much to take on for the year ahead, you know, you're only a volunteer or you don't have a ton of staff people, you're already overburdened as it is. There's lots of ways that you can host a fundraising event, start one of these campaigns without taking on the additional logistical effort that is often tied with a an in-person event like a gala or something like that. So I wanted to share just a couple of ideas for people to consider some of the most successful types of campaigns that we've seen over the years that really work for these fundraising events. Of course, run, walks, and races. That's something that is really easy for individuals to, to want to be a part of. It gives them a chance to be active, gives them a chance to get out and run or bike or walk, whatever it might be in their local community in a cool area, um, gives them the opportunity to do that. And as I mentioned already, is a really easy entry point to starting to fundraise if maybe they've never really thought about fundraising before. Walkathons. Uh, there's all different types of athons you can do, which again, make that fundraising piece feel even easier because individuals are asking people to pledge or commit to a certain amount of a gift based on what they can accomplish, how much they walk, how much they read, how much they swim, how long they do yoga, how long they dance. There's all different kinds of things that you can do with that athon concept. And uh, for those of you that, that might be thinking, that sounds really fun, but I don't have the time to plan a walk or a race in my community. I just don't have the resources to put on my own event. You have the option in many cities and states across the country, uh, there are existing races already happening, marathons, triathlons, whatever it might be. You can join into one of those get the benefit of somebody else already doing all the organizing effort for that and just use it as a chance to organize a group of supporters that will participate in this race and fundraise for your organization as they participate in this race. That really allows you to focus on the part of this that really drives dollars and donors, which is getting people to fundraise and focusing less on the actual logistics of running an event. For schools in particular, lots of great opportunities to create friendly competition between different classes, different grades, lower school versus an upper school, alumni versus existing students, departments versus other departments. There's lots of really fun things you can do to create ways that people within your school system can fundraise, but have that extra added um, engagement of that competition among somebody else they see all the time around the school. So lots of things that you can do there. Many organizations, again, small, large staff, all volunteers, you've got people that support your organization. So if you have a large staff, you can have a fun competition either among staff members or among different departments within your organization. If you don't have a lot of staff, you're really volunteer heavy, you can encourage volunteers to have their own team to participate uh, in this, in whatever event you're hosting. Golf tournaments, of course, always fun and exciting. Um, and finally, the last option I'll mention here, although there are plenty more that I didn't mention, lots of creative things you can do, is uh, encouraging your board of directors to uh, compete against each other for uh, friendly competition to raise money for your organization. Uh, that's one of the key roles of a board member is to advocate and spread the word and raise money on your behalf. So why not make it interesting for them, make it fun for them, add a little challenge uh, to pit them all against each other and see who can really come out and raise the most. So now that I've given us just a little context to get started on why team fundraising, fundraising is exciting and some, some things that you might be able to do to build it into your 
strategy for the year ahead. I'm going to turn it over to Bryce Melvin, again, our VP of Product and Operations, to give us just a little bit of a highlight of what we will see when we jump into the live walkthrough of the event's product in just a few minutes. Thanks, Bethany. And uh, hey, everyone, I'm, I'm really glad to be here today. Uh, glad to talk to you about this new product and um, the new changes that we've released for uh, team and event fundraising. So. Um, my uh, my team here at uh, Mighty Cause we've been very hard work over the last uh, couple of months uh, preparing for this and, and building some really awesome new features into the product um, to help uh, nonprofits and organizers uh, really take their fundraising to the next level. So I'm really excited about what we've got uh, and what and what we have coming as well. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of new things uh, coming in the next few months too that we're going to be sharing with you as we go along. But um, first off, I just wanted to highlight a few of the things about our, our teams and events product. And that is that really starts with having something that's extremely user friendly. So we want we want anybody to be able to come to Mighty Cause, create a team event or fundraiser and have it look really good um, without having a bunch of technical knowledge or background. So, you know, our design team has worked really hard to um, to lay things out and to make it easy for for you to make a page that looks really compelling and modern and easy to use and, and that, that stretches from a desktop experience all the way to a mobile experience because we're seeing more and more, uh, and I'm sure you are too, seeing more and more individuals donating and interacting uh, using a mobile device, um, over 50% at this point. So mobile is a very important part of our, our, our design um, experience here um, at Mighty Cause. And, um, Along with that, as Bethany mentioned, a big part of the the, uh, the fundraising team and event fundraising is uh, the competition aspect of it. And so our, our, our leaderboards are designed with real-time metrics. So as soon as someone makes a donation, you'll see the update there on the leaderboard in real time. Uh, and that just provides um, you know, even more excitement during the event or uh, leading up to the event, watching that leaderboard. And as Bethany will get into, as we look at our demo, uh, those leaderboards are extremely customizable. So, you know, whether you want to compete on dollars or or donors, um, or maybe you just want it to list everybody alphabetically, um, you can do that as well. Um, as, as a team captain or leader, uh, managing your participants is really important and being able to message them and communicate with them throughout the event to encourage them. We provide you with the tools to do that, as well as help people get their, their fundraiser set up in an easy way. So with the fundraiser template, it makes it super easy for your volunteers, your board members to get their page started um, and, and not have to start from scratch. And of course, the, the newest feature that we're really excited about is the ability to encourage fundraisers and teams within your event. So being able to uh, ha have an event and have a, a, a team uh, participate in that event with fundraisers underneath that team. So if, like Bethany was talking about, if you've got a school, you, you can create teams for each of the classes and um, have each student have a fundraiser page underneath their class. So not only do you have a competition going on the team level, but uh, that team then gets to compete at the event level against other teams. And, uh, and so that's uh, something we're really excited about. We've heard a lot a lot of people um, asking for that over the years, and, and we're really excited to launch that uh, that new feature um, with our product. So really excited to be here with you guys today. And uh, as Bethany goes through, if there's any questions you have, uh, let us know. And uh, always excited to hear questions and feedback. Thanks, Bethany. Great. Thanks, Bryce. So one more quick thing before we actually jump into our live walkthrough is you may think with all of these really exciting, amazing features, this great way to raise funds that you have to pay more to get it. Uh, and so I wanted to make sure everybody knows that you don't. There is no setup cost, no upfront cost to host a team fundraiser. So if you're used to using the platform, it's that same transaction fee model that we have available with no additional cost. And what's really exciting is that through the platform, donors have the option to easily cover any transaction fees associated with their donation. And when you encourage that, organizations often can pay 
less than 1.9% in fees, which when you think about all the effort that you put into fundraising and all the different ways that you fundraise throughout the year, that's a really low cost to raise funds here. So excited to share that information with you just to make sure you know it's not out of your budget to add a team or event fundraiser into your plans for the year ahead. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the walkthrough. So as Bryce mentioned again, please feel free to um, add questions into the uh, GoToWebinar control panel at any time while I'm chatting and we'll leave some time at the end to answer as many of those as we can. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with creating an event fundraiser. Really quick and easy to get started. Very exciting, if, if you had a team or an event that was starting this afternoon or tomorrow, you still have plenty of time to get a page up and running to support that event. So the first step, of course, is to be logged into your account. You can always know if you're logged into your account by hovering over your name in the upper right-hand corner. You'll see your name here. If you're not logged in, go ahead and log in. If you don't have an account, it's free and easy to set up an account. From any page across the Mighty Calls platform, your own organization page or the home page like I am here, you can hover over this little plus sign in the upper left corner, which gives you options for what type of campaign you might be looking to start. A fundraiser is of course a page that an individual might start on behalf of your organization or a campaign that your organization might start if you have a specific project or program that you're trying to fund with a single page in mind. A fundraising team, as we've mentioned a few times, is a group of people coming together to fundraise. And what we're really here to focus on today, a fundraising event, incorporates all of those. So it gives your organization the opportunity to have an event website where you can talk about the event that you are running. You can have individuals participate with fundraisers. You can have teams participate with groups of individuals. Lots of exciting ways to raise funds with this event. So we get started by clicking to create a fundraising event. Give you a little bit of information here just to make sure this is what you're looking for. So you'll click to get started. And really the only choice you have to make here is where will the funds go? So for the majority of people, this is just identifying, telling uh, the system that you want your organization to be the one to receive the funds. So you can search for your organization either by the name or your tax ID number pull up an organization, find your name, you can confirm it again by that tax ID number and your location, click to select and then continue. I'll take a moment to note that you can have an event that benefits multiple organizations. If for example, you're hosting an event and you want each of those participants or each of the teams that participate to choose their own cause that they're supporting. You can do that too by selecting multiple beneficiaries here on this page. So you'll continue and now you're ready to launch your event manager and actually start editing and customizing your event page. So you're dropped right onto a page with all of the editing tools open for you. So as Bryce mentioned, we really tried to make it easy and user friendly to customize your page. So all of these places where you see pencil icons, that's your encouragement to click on the icon and actually make an update to customize the page. One I'll point out here, because uh, I think this is really an important one when it comes to how can I create a really beautiful page if I'm not a graphic designer, I'm not a web designer. So by editing your theme, you've got a couple of key choices like uploading a background image from any of these places or choosing one of the options from our gallery, choosing a filter color that might go over that background image, playing around with the strength of that filter color, and finally choosing a theme color for the page. Again, all of these things allow you to look at the changes that you're making as you're making them so that you have the option to create a really powerful looking page, again, with just a few clicks, no design experience needed. So now that I've shown you how easy it is to create, I'm gonna jump into a page that's already set up and built so that we can see what your page can really look like when customized and built well, and walk through all the features that you have access to. 
So here we are on a, uh, an event fundraising page for an exciting Doggy Dash. We just saw some of the editing features on that last page. All of those help you build this really um, dynamic looking landing page so that as soon as somebody gets to your page, they see your logo, they see this great image, they see all these important information about how much is raised, how much time is left. We wanna give you the chance to easily customize this page. As we scroll down the page, you'll see two of your most important calls to action, two of the most important buttons and things on this entire page. First is of course the donate button, which gives visitors to your event page the opportunity to search for somebody that's participating. If they know a friend or a group of people, a team is participating, they wanna to give to them, they can search for them. Or you as the organizer have the opportunity to set up a general fund so if they maybe don't have somebody particular in mind, but they just love your organization and they want to support, they can easily make a quick donation to the general fund without having to make too many decisions. The other key uh, button right here at the top of the page is, of course, the call to join the event. Joining the event, an individual will have two key options for how to join. The first is, of course, starting a fundraiser. This is for somebody who's just an individual. If you've got a race, they just wanna have their own fundraising page to participate in this race. Now, the great thing about this is that if you've set up a template, which I'll show you in just a few minutes, as Bryce mentioned, if you've set up a fundraiser template, this individual has just a few clicks to set up and publish their page and, and start accepting donations. They don't have to customize anything that they don't want to. They just click to start a fundraiser, get dropped on their page. They'll have the opportunity to customize with their own editing fields, but with all of those pre-built for them on the template, just a few clicks gets them up and running. The other option, of course, is to create a team. This is for those situations where you might have a group of people that wants to fundraise together, so say for your race, you wanna encourage your board of directors to have their own team of participants. You want to encourage a local um, pet store who is has been really supportive of your work. Um, they're a sponsor for the event. You, they want to have a team of their own employees that fundraise together for the event. They would create a team page. I'll show you that in just a moment. But two quick options uh, for people to get started and join your event. Moving down the page, we have this leaderboard that we've talked about a little so far. Really an exciting part of the page. This will be dynamic and change as people raise more money and receive more donations. So you have two key versions of your leaderboard. One, where you can see all of the individuals that are participating in your event, and two, where you can see all the groups of individuals participating as teams in your event. So as Bryce mentioned, there's lots of additional customization options available as an organizer. You may want to rank your leaderboard based on the number of dollars raised, if that's an important metric for you. But we know plenty of teams where it's much more important to focus on the number of donors that have given to a campaign or the number of donations that have given to a campaign. Or finally, if you don't want to uh, really focus on that competitive aspect and you'd rather just rank uh, the leaderboard in alphabetical order so it's easy for people to find who they're looking for, you can select that too. So lots of great options uh, for you to customize easily customize the look of that leaderboard. And visitors to the page can come scroll through the leaderboard or they can search for a specific individual if they know somebody's participating and they wanna just find and support that cause, they can do that as well. As we continue to scroll down the page, you get to the section where you really have the opportunity to tell the story of this event. What's this event all about? What are you raising funds for? How can people participate? And so you've got this great customizable free form section where you can add formatting and bullets and headers and video and photo and links, all kinds of things, you name it, 
you can add it here to really build a dynamic story, right? Nobody wants to just look at a wall of text. You want to make things, make it exciting for people, call out the most important things that people should do, make it easy, and share the relevant information that's going to get them excited about the event. You also have the ability to add additional custom tabs, multiple custom tabs to share more information that is helpful to promote your event. For example, in this case, makes a ton of sense to have just a tab that shares race information. This information is only really critical for the people that are actually participating and running the race, but you want to make sure you share this information with them. So you can build out a page, again, with the same easy to use editing tools, you can build out this content. You might also use one of these additional tabs to share information on prizes or incentives that people have the chance to win if they're the top fundraiser or the top team participating in the event. Uh, you can use this to share resources with these fundraisers. Um, one of the great ways that you can encourage your participants to be successful is by giving them a toolkit and templates like emails that they can copy and paste, social media posts that they can copy and paste and make it really easy for them to fundraise. You could build out a tab that just shares uh, resources with your fundraisers. So lots of different things that you can do. Again, really use the page as you need, share the content and information that's most helpful and most important for your event. And the final thing that we'll cover right here on the event page is your sponsor section. This is a fully customizable section. You can create as many different tiers as you want to recognize different groups uh, or types of uh, supporters for your campaign, whether they're sponsors, uh, in-kind donors, community partners. You can have logos like we've got represented here. You could also just add names if you've got you know, an advisory board or a list of individuals that have made donations or volunteered or whatever it might be. This is really your section to use and promote whatever is important to you. Again, as many tiers, you can have gold, silver, bronze sponsors, a great opportunity for you to show some love to those uh, partners, sponsors, whoever they are that are helping to make your event a success. So now that we've covered the event page, I'm just going to briefly show you some of the additional tools that you have access to when you're hosting an event on Mighty Cause. First, of course, is your members dashboard. This is your opportunity to access some key information about those participants in your event. You can easily invite new members. You can also send a message right through this tool through to all of your members. So whether you're sending them tips uh, and information to help them fundraise, telling them information about the event, you know, the actual in-person race event, uh, sharing information about the prizes that are available. This is also a great thing that you can use throughout the campaign to keep engaged with those fundraisers, keep them excited about what they're doing, keep them on track, let them know the progress you're making throughout your campaign. Or of course, you can always download this list if you need to do something with it, the data outside of Mighty Cause. You'll have access, of course, to a donations report where you can access all of the key information uh, about any donor to the campaign. You can see the full list of donors. You can also filter if you're just looking for donors to a specific uh, Teams campaign. You also have the ability to add offline donations. So for example, somebody sends a check right to your office, but you know this check is on behalf of an individual participating or a team. You can add an offline donation right to their page so that their totals and your overall event totals reflect all of the giving that's happening, both online and offline. You also, within your event, have the opportunity to customize the donation experience in a few key ways. You can add custom donation levels, so choosing that you want to encourage people to give at these specific levels and adding a description to help them understand what that $100 donation really means for your organization. You also have the ability to choose what data you want to collect from your donors. Maybe gender, phone number, age, company, whatever it is, 
If that's important to you to collect that data from donors supporting your event, it's as easy as toggling that button on or of course leaving it off. You also have the ability to build a thank you page which donors will see after they make their donation to your event. You have, just like you did on the story section of the page, really easy to use editing tools to build a dynamic page, add photo, add video, add links, whatever it might be. And you can even choose a specific call to action, create a button and a link of where that button should direct people. If you want to send people back to your event page or maybe to your organization's website or to your blog, whatever it might be that's going to uh, appropriately thank the donor and keep them moving on their uh, stewardship journey within your organization. And the last feature, which we've talked about just a little bit before, is the fundraiser template. Really easy in just a few minutes for you as the organizer to fill out a few key fields and build a template page for any individual participating. Title, goal, image, a short description, and a longer description. So within just a few minutes, you can pre-populate this content, making it really easy for your individual supporters to create their page. But also, this is a great opportunity for you as the organization to help make sure some of your key messaging stays on all of these pages. Of course, fundraisers do have the option to customize their page, but it's always helpful to have that content and information coming right from you as the organizer uh, to help them make that even easier. So now that we've gone through the event page and all the tools that you have access through here, I want to show you what a team page looks like. So this is, again, a group of individuals that are participating in your team or in your event. And I'll mention that groups of people can create a team or you can create a team that doesn't have to be connected to an event. It's a great way to make an event even more powerful, but it's also a great opportunity just to bring people together for a simple fundraising effort if that's really what suits the needs of your organization. So similarly, you've got great editing tools to build a powerful page, but as Bryce mentioned, really the design for this page tried to keep in mind what are the least possible uh, steps that an organizer would need to take to build a great page. So while you have the opportunity to add a logo, add a title, update your theme, add a description, none of those fields are really necessary to build a good team page. This team is your opportunity to organize a group of people. If you build a title, you can invite people to start their fundraiser as a part of your team. So you could have a very simple, very streamlined page that takes no time at all to build up, or you can add a little more character to it, add a little more color to it, create a goal for the specific team, uh, create a story that's just about your group of people all coming together to fundraise. And any sponsors that you've added to your event page will show here as well, just giving that extra prominence, extra promotion for those supporters for your event. Team organizers have access to similar editing tools as well as management tools. They can see information about their own members, they can see donations to their own page, and they also have the option to create their own template for individual fundraisers if they'd like to do so. But really, the exciting piece of this page is, one, to share key stats and metrics about how this group of people is doing fundraising together for your event. And this leaderboard, as Bryce mentioned, you can now have competition on two levels, within your team, within the group of employees participating, within the class, different students participating, whatever it might be, you can have competition at this level, and then again, at the event level. So lots of different ways to encourage competition and all of that competition is just encouraging people to do more and raise more for your organization. And the final layer here of the overall events product is of course an individual fundraiser page. So an individual fundraiser can join your event on their own. They can just create their own page and join 
or they can create a page as a part of a team, part of a subgroup of your event, but they have access to their own editing tools. Again, easy to use editing tools that make it simple and quick for somebody to build a really good looking page. They'll use your template or in the case of this, they've added their own personal photo, they've added some information about themselves personally and why they're participating in the event. This fundraiser page is really for this individual to share directly with their family and friends, whether on social or through email. So the more personalized that they make this page, the more uh, engaging it will be to their friends and family who might recognize the photo of the dog or might know your dog and, and might have that extra level of connection and be even more willing to make their donation to support your page. All right, so here we've done just a very brief walkthrough to give you a feel for all the features that you have access to as an event organizer for building a great event page and managing your event, managing your fundraisers, seeing how individuals can group together to form teams to fundraise on your behalf, and how individuals can participate all on their own. And so with that, I'm going to open it back up for questions. So if you haven't added a question yet, please go ahead and do so now. And I will go ahead and start uh, walking us through some of the questions. And all right, let's see. Our first question here, is it possible for people to just register to participate in my event if they don't want to have their own fundraiser. So Bryce, I'm going to allow you to answer uh, these questions as they come in. Sounds great. <laughs> so uh, we are uh, we are actually in the process of working on a um, an awesome ticketing and registration integration with Eventbrite, and uh, we hope to have that out in the next uh, sometime this uh, early this spring uh, so giving you the possibility to allow people to just register or purchase a ticket um, yeah, for a particular event and, and have it optional whether they fundraise or not so so that's definitely something that uh, some more improvements that we have coming down the road and we'll be sure to share that announcement as soon as that uh, as that is released great thank you but I would, uh, Beth, sorry, <laughs> I would say too, you know, you can definitely, in, in the meantime, uh, with the, the story section on your event page, you can definitely put instructions and links there. So, you know, if you want to have people go to Eventbrite or another uh, registration form, for example, to register for the event, um, you can embed those links directly uh, you know, within your your story, uh, your your team or event page, um, so that people can see those instructions and click on those. Great, thanks. Uh, next question we have: um, I'm doing, I'm planning a spring walkathon for my organization. Uh, should I create a team page or an event page for that? That's a great question. So, it, you know, it really depends on, you know, what what uh, level of features that you're you're looking for. Uh, typically, I would I would steer you towards creating an event for uh, something like a, a walkathon or or something that's you know event based. Uh, the event really gives you, if you think about it, the event gives you all of the tools and features that you 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 need. Uh, a team, on the other hand, is really designed to more to just kind of collect a group of fundraisers together. So it's a lot simpler to set up. It's a lot quicker to set up. So if you've got just a, a few fundraisers and you just want to get some sort of a page to collect everybody together on one page, that's that's where the team is a, is a really great fit uh, for those types of fundraising events. Great. Uh, next question here, uh, what if a donor wants to be anonymous or uh, doesn't want somebody to know how much they gave to the campaign? Yeah, so uh, in our donation, and this is all across Mighty Cause, in our donation uh, uh, flow process, um, the donor has the option to 
um, indicate that they wish to remain publicly uh, publicly anonymous, um, you would still get their um, contact information, but you would see that they have requested anonymity uh, for their contribution. Um, and, and we're not going to, you know, show them in the activity feed or anything like that if that's the case. Um, the donor can also request to show their name, but have their amount be hidden. So we give um, a lot of flexibility to the donor to decide what level of privacy they would like um, when they're making their donation. Great. Um, next question here. Um, so sponsors will automatically show up on the team fundraising page. I will uh, just take that one because it is a quick yes. If you have an event uh, that you have set up sponsors for, then any team pages that are underneath your event will also automatically have those sponsors shown just again for that increased uh, prominence and promotion for those people. All right. Um, next question here. Uh, I missed the full under information under raise more pay more would you please repeat the obligation from our fundraiser to mighty cause um i think the the question here is really around um the fees and you know and what's I, obligation uh i don't know exactly about that word in particular uh any funds that you raise through your campaign your organization will keep you don't have to meet your goal amount to uh, get any of the funds that you raise. Um, there are no upfront fees to host a team or event campaign. Um, the only fees that are associated are a 4% platform fee that comes to Mighty Cause, as well as a 2.9% plus 30 cent credit card fee, which is a pass through cost for us that goes to the credit card companies. But as I mentioned earlier, it's very easy to encourage donors to cover those fees. And when donors are opted in to covering those fees, over 80, between 80 and 90% of donors can actually cover those fees for you. So that at the end of the day, the check that you receive, the direct deposit that you receive from Mighty Cause for hosting your campaign will have very little fees actually taken out of it. So hopefully that helps to uh, answer that question. Um, one more question here. Um, what kind of data do I, as an event organizer, have access to? You want me to take that one, Bethany? Yeah, go for it. Sure, sure. So um, anything that you collect in the donation flow, and, and, and Bethany showed you, you that you can kind of customize that, um, whether you collect the address or the phone number, uh, the age or the company, um, all of that information is provided. You, 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 uh, on the donation report on the website, uh, there's not, you know, you can see the basic information, but once you download that information, you're, you've got a whole wealth of uh, additional columns that you have access to. Um, so the, their, their address uh, information. Um, we also provide, uh, you know, what page it came through. And so if you need to put that into a different system and sort it in Excel or, or do different things with it, um, you can do that uh, through the downloaded uh, uh, CSV or Excel file, um, you know, and then and then you can also uh, kind of track, uh, you know, we and we have a support article on this, but you can include, uh, for example, a, a referral code in the URLs that you hand out, so you can track where donations came from uh, in, in specific instances. So whether somebody clicked on a link on Facebook that you published or or another marketing material. So, so lots of information that you can get um, through your Mighty Cause uh, you know, fundraising event. Great. Um, and I think uh, one more question, we're just about out of time, but I'm gonna ask one more question and I'll share my thoughts. And then Bryce, if you have anything else to add, you're welcome to do so. Uh, do you have event ideas for small nonprofits? Uh, this is a great question and my um, my core advice is keep it simple. Um, when it comes to events, all kinds of events, oftentimes nonprofits end up focusing more on the logistics of hosting an event than the actual what is going to bring in more dollars for our organization. Uh, I've been a part of events for previous nonprofits I've worked at that did this 
um, a little bit. So what I'd say is if you're a small organization, you don't have a ton of resources in either staff or funds uh, to put on an event, keep it simple. Um, like that idea I mentioned of joining on to a marathon that might be happening in your um, in your town or in somewhere close by locally, that completely removes the element that has to do with managing the logistics of an event, marketing an event, getting people to show up, getting volunteers, you know, designing the race information, getting sponsors for the event, all of that stuff goes away. And what you get to focus on is just identifying specific people that are in your network of supporters that might want to run that race, do a triathlon, uh, and do it on behalf of your organization. So you get to really focus on the most important piece, which is selecting those individuals that can fundraise on your behalf and giving them tips and tricks and staying engaged with them throughout the lead up to help them raise more funds for your organization. So that's my key idea is to keep it simple, um, focus on things that you don't have to do a lot of upfront work for, like joining on an event like that, or keeping it to be kind of more of a digital focused event uh, or something that, that just brings people together, like a board of directors fundraising challenge. Every nonprofit, large or small, has a board of directors that should ideally be excited at the opportunity uh, to jump in and start fundraising on your behalf. All you have to do in that case is create the page and reach out to your board members to get them started. So keep it simple, focus on things uh, that will allow you to spend your energy, that precious energy uh, that small nonprofits have, uh, you know, a little bit less of uh, on the things that are really gonna bring in more dollars. Yeah, and, and I just I agree with all the things that, the points that you made, Bethany. And uh, keeping it simple is key. And really, for a small nonprofit, uh, taking a first step approach on this, maybe you know, doing something uh, more digital based online rather than trying to create an in person type event. And and like Bethany said, board members are a great way to get that jump started. But also, you know, think about your business community, your chamber of commerce. You know, um, businesses can be extremely competitive, uh, and so create a competition uh, and see which which of your sponsoring businesses can raise the most money. And 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 the the cool thing about this uh, product is that each company can have a team, and so within their team within their own company, they they can create a, a little bit of a competitive atmosphere to see who can raise. The most money so um just just an additional idea for you yeah absolutely and the last thing i'll mention is don't be intimidated that because you're a small nonprofit, you don't have the resources to put you know to put on an event or to choose to run an event um that's really these are just as powerful if not more powerful for a small nonprofit who really needs and deserves the ability to connect with new individuals. So when you have a team or an event fundraising, it's not just you as the board of, as the executive director or the development director to do all the fundraising. It's not all on you and that existing list you have. You get to basically empower all kinds of new people to go out and fundraise on your behalf. So really, you're kind of adding to your existing staff of fundraisers. So really exciting opportunity for small nonprofits, but again, keep it simple so that you can focus on the parts that are really uh, bring in those funds. And with that, I think we've covered uh, all the questions so far. Um, we'll let everyone get back to their day, but please feel free to reach out to us at support at mightycause.com with any questions about how to do a team or event fundraiser, any questions you have about a campaign that you might like to run, you'd like to talk it through with someone. We've got lots of content and resources that we'll be coming out with soon. We'll have an ebook, we'll have a checklist, all kinds of great things to make it even easier for you to uh, run a team or event fundraiser. So with that, thanks everyone. And thanks Bryce for joining us today. Thank you and send us your feedback as well. So any, any feedback or, questions that you have um, uh, and, and our support team will filter that up to, to us here, but we'd love to hear how we can help you uh, succeed even more in your fundraising activities. So thank you all. Great. Thanks.